morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I tell you, we have hearty souls, but uh, and we are socially distant. That's really good. You know? Yes, we are. <laughs> there is absolutely no possibility of uh, contamination, <laughs> but it's great. Thank you all for coming this morning. I realize that the road conditions could be a little treacherous, and certainly we welcome those of you watching this at home. You are very much a part of our family. You know, today we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions. We're going to talk about it in terms of the context of Jesus being baptized. One of the more confusing parts of Scripture, why would Jesus be baptized? What was, what was that all about? Why was he baptized? And how does that have to do with making any kind of a resolution about our life or about the life of a church or a community? So how many here have already made a New Year's resolution? Oh, boy. Well, hey. We have a very smart... Yes, we do. A a absolutely. But there goes my sermon. <laughs> Good. Can we leave? Yeah. I was going to say, we're going to be out of here pretty early. I hope, Ed, you've got something to say. <laughs> no, it is. Uh, I actually do. I actually try to make New Year's resolutions every year. And it's really good that I'm a pastor because then I can give them up for Lent. That's what I like about it. But seriously, we are, we are gathered today to celebrate the fact that God loves us. To celebrate the fact that God sent his son to reveal that love, to reveal God's grace. And to celebrate the fact that we are called to be a very special people on a very specific mission. That's what church is really all about. So let us begin today, as we do each time the good folk of Salem gather with the powerful affirmation, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let, let us, us rejoice and be glad in it. Are there announcements this morning? Yes. Bob, I'm just saying that we've been looking for a small church, and they said this church is pretty good. There's a few good people here, so. That's the, that, we decided that, to come back. <laughs> well, we, we, we thank you. So I said a few big. <laughs> okay, so the other church asked you to leave, didn't they? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. He wanted me to stay. But yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> Trust me, I understand. <laughs> if there are no other announcements, I would like to just take a moment to have us offer to one another a sign of the peace and the joy we know in Christ. Hi, back world. Good morning. Oh, you don't get up no more? No. Yeah, nah. I would know. Uh, before, we, before we begin today, I want to just take a moment to talk about our sanctuary camp. <coughs> Yesterday was Lennon's first birthday. Oh. And so the candle today is in celebration of Lennon and celebration, I think it's so neat. I ran into her last night shopping at Walmart. And I, a uh, good way to spend your birthday. So like I was telling Ed, I told her, buy anything you want and send the bill to Great Grandpa Ed. <laughs> but no, um, as we said last week, it's so interesting because at Christmas we celebrate how a tiny babe changed the world. And I think in many ways, Lennon has given new life to this church. Every time she's here, I see people smile, you know, I see people just rejoicing around her, and there's just a light in her. I, even last night in Walmart, people were stopping because she is so cute. You know? <laughs> they weren't stopping because I'm so cute, trust me. <laughs> but uh, we want to celebrate, and we celebrate the gift that she is to us. And isn't it amazing how a small child can bring about changes we can't make in ourselves? I think that's a tremendous lesson for everyone who visits the manger in Bethlehem as we do each Christmas, that a small child often carries more power and purpose and light than we adults. So with that being said, let us be about the reason we have gathered today as we join in our call to worship. Please stand as you are able. A man named John spoke in a prophetic language. He called, he called people, people to, to repentance. repentance. The kingdom of God is now is near, he proclaimed. A man named Jesus asked to be baptized. The sign of God has entered human history. The light shines forth. 
Please join us in our opening hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, on page 230. We'll do verses 1, 2, and 4 with an introduction. and remember the fundamental truth of our faith. And the fundamental truth of our faith is that in Jesus Christ, we can be people of joy. We can be people of hope, and we can be people of promise. And that means that in life, no matter what we experience, we meet it with a joyful heart. No matter what, we, what challenges we face, we meet it with a hopeful heart. No matter what fears we have, we meet it with a peaceful heart. And so my joy today is that despite inclement weather, we can still gather to celebrate God's love. We can still gather to worship. And it's interesting when we think about it. Now, we have been, this church has gathered for many, many years. And in, in days of sunshine and warmth and beautiful summer days, beautiful spring days, cold wintry days like today, snowy days like last Sunday, but think about this. God is always the same. And sometimes I have to stop and think about that because sometimes I really start to think maybe God changes like the weather does. Like maybe there's a time in my life when God likes me more than others. Or maybe there's a time when God is more involved in human history. And that's totally incorrect. God is present to us every single moment in exactly the same way. God never changes. God's promises never change. There is not one other thing in human life that we can say never changes. There's not one thing in our existence that we can say remains the same, except for God. And we only know that through Jesus Christ. So, joys this morning. Yes. It's a joy to be finally be, you know, be back in church. Yes, it is. Hopefully, 2022 will be a better year than 2021. Well, now remember we said that last year about 2021. Forget it, forget it. You saw how that one worked out. Yes. Yes, it's a joy to have you back in church, Elaine. Actually, both of you. <laughs> Judy did a very nice job filling in for you, heckling me, by the way. I heard that. Yeah, you might want to, you want to mention that to Judy, that she did a good job heckling me. Yeah. Yes. She did do a good job. Yes, she did. Lloyd has another month. He doesn't have to have chemo. 
That's great. Awesome. Other other joys, other concerns this morning. Yes, John. I want uh, concern for the family of Bob Vasquez. He passed away a couple of days ago. And what's the last name? Vasquez. Vasquez. Yeah, he's a fellow machinist. All right. right. We will certainly pray for his family. Yes. I have two prayer requests, please. First, for um, a co-worker's mother. Her name is Maggie Curtis. Mm -hmm. uh, she's facing some life-altering choices. And second, for my husband's uncle in Florida, who's 94, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, they put him in hospice okay. over the weekend. So prayers for him. And what's his name? Uh, Dean Watson. Dean, OK. Mm -hmm. Adam. Yes, Adam. Uh, prayers for uh, one of our school friends, Ali, her husband, Ralph Fernandez, passed away. OK. Certainly. Very good. Anyone else? All right, let us go to a loving God in prayer. Holy God, you are a God who never changes, a God whose promises are true, a God who is not bound simply by the, by the circumstances of our life, but a God who is continuing to build your good creation. And we pray that we may reveal that love. We lift up to you today the family of Bob Vasquez. We pray that they may be comforted by the legacy of his life, a life lived well amid human circumstance. And may they find great hope in the promise of Easter dawn. We pray for Maggie. We pray for Dean. We pray that your wisdom, your guidance, your strength may be with them. May they feel your healing presence. And may they be nurtured by your love and protected as they, as they walk this often difficult journey of life. But know, may they know that in our prayers, they never walk that journey alone. We pray for Lee on the loss of her husband, Ralph. We pray that she may be comforted. For we know that closure in grief is difficult. But as she walks the journey of grief, may she know that she is surrounded by friends who will comfort her, who will sustain her. And we pray that in your healing presence, you may give her the light of truth that is found in the resurrection of your son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning's uh, prayer of confession. Holy God, in your the Son, the light, the light of your wisdom, wisdom touched and changed the world, darkened by sin, sin and guilt. Yet, yet we, we often fail to awaken to that light in our own lives. lives. As, As we left that tiny babe in Bethlehem, we once again were distracted by the language of the world. In your mercy, forgive us for those times when we have failed to not only understand the light that proclaims your truth, but to carry that light to the world. Renew us so that we may be the light of your Son to all people everywhere. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, can we bring forward, would someone bring forward the gifts this morning? those who suffer injustice, 
bringing to our lives those who suffer physically so that they may be comforted by experiencing your love. Bring to our lives those that cry out to know a sense of wholeness so they may know the truth of salvation. We pray this in your son's blessed name. Amen. Amen. This morning's epistle reading comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them, they had simply been baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hand on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Uh, this morning's uh, gospel reading, and if, you, if you'll stand it uh, as you're able. The gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As I said at the beginning of the service, I am very bad about making New Year's resolutions. I actually never keep a New Year's resolution that I make. But I do recall when I was younger, I was in my 20s, I was actually invited to a New Year's Eve party because actually in my 20s I did have friends. What happened since then I really don't know, but in the 20s I was a popular guy. And I was at this New Year's Eve party and I was talking to this young woman and she told me all of the things she was gonna do to improve her life in the coming year. And I thought, that's really impressive. So I told her, that is an awesome set of New Year's resolutions. And she said, those aren't New Year's resolutions. Those are conditions of my probation. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, look at the time. I got to go. So it's almost 7.30. I said, I go by Australian time. It's already 1975. I'm out of here. But that's the reality, isn't it? How often do we change only because we have to? How often do we really make a positive change only because we have to? Now you may be asking yourself, what could this possibly have to do with the baptism of Jesus? Well, it has everything to do with the baptism of Jesus. If we really understand what baptism meant to the Israelites. We talk about baptism in our tradition from the perspective of individual sin. That in our baptism is a sign, it is a symbol of God's grace working in our heart to give that great gift of forgiveness. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, but that's not what baptism meant to the Israelites in the first century. When John was, was in the wilderness, you know, and he was baptizing people in the Jordan River, they were being cleansed of the sin of the Israelites against God. They're talking about the sins of a community turning away from God. That's what was happening. And he's saying, and John is proclaiming this message, come back to God, turn to God, not, not to the leaders of this world, not to the Roman Empire, turn to God. And so the, it was a communal repentance, saying, God, we turn to you now. We pray for mercy for the time we as a people have turned away. We as a people have created false idols. We as a people have turned from your ways and your truth. 
And that comes from a section of the prophet Isaiah known as Deutero-Isaiah, which is called 2nd Isaiah. Roughly 10 to 15 verses, kind of in the middle of the, the book of the prophet Isaiah, where they talk about God's love for Israel, but how the people have turned away. So now we have Jesus coming out of the crowd. Just a face in the crowd, probably not easy to distinguish him. When he was in the crowd, he would have looked like many other 30-year-old Middle Eastern men. No doubt his hands were calloused and worn from working as a, as a carpenter. His skin darkened by the, by the blazing sun, so he did not look any different until he walked up to John. And John saw him as the Messiah. Now, if we do believe, we believe that Jesus was born without sin, then why would he be baptized? He was the Son of God. It's because Jesus was now representing the new Israel. He was now representing the new Israel so that, so that he would call all people to return to God. It was a new day for the people, for the Israelites. And it was a day when they were truly called to turn back toward God. That's what repent really means, turn toward God, not turn toward other things in life. And that's what we are called to do today. We become so caught up in this idea of, and this is a sin, that's not a sin. We have, in all of our denominations, I'm not singling out any denomination, but we have created something that keeps people out. We have created something that defines certain people as holy and certain people as rejected. And we create these rules and then we come up with this list of sinful things that, that you should not do. But the one thing that sin really begins with is when we turn from God. When we decide that we can do it on our own. When we decide that we do not need anyone's assistance. When we decide that the wisdom we want is our wisdom. That the hope we want is our hope. That the peace we want we're going to find in a possession or a relationship or a job. But what we are saying about a new year is that this is really a time when we need to turn to God. Because here's the interesting thing that was happening when John is baptizing people in the Jordan River. The interesting thing that was happening is they were making it about God, not about themselves. That is what a resolution for a follower of Jesus Christ should be about. Making it about God. How in our life this coming year are we going to reflect, are we going to reflect God's love? How in our life this coming year are we going to have people say that person has faith in his or her life? How are we going to have people say that person is showing compassion? beyond anything that I have ever experienced. Why do you think it was difficult for the Israelites to turn back to God? Even though in scripture it says there were throngs of people waiting to be baptized. But look at the world they had inhabited. They had been under foreign occupation countless times the Babylonians, the Egyptians, now the Roman Empire, the Greeks. Virtually everyone had captured, exploited, and occupied the Israelites. And even when John was baptizing, there, many of the Israelites were still in exile. They were still spread across the country. But the fact of the matter is that even because of that, they still tried to turn back to God, but they had an awful lot of baggage, didn't they? They had a tremendous amount of baggage from their history. A tremendous amount of baggage where they would say, God, why did they let this happen to us? God, why did you let the Romans occupy us? Why did you let the Greeks refuse to allow us to worship in the temple? 
Why did you let the Babylonians take us captive and take us from our homeland? That was the baggage they had. The key is, what baggage do we have that keeps us from turning to God and revealing God this year? What baggage do we have? Think about that in your own mind. Are there things in our life where we feel God hasn't been present? Are we still feeling as though we are in exile from God in many ways? Are there things in our life where we need to say publicly, I'm turning to God, not away from God? It's always the baggage in our lives that keeps us from fully experiencing God's love and God's grace. It is always the baggage. And we all have baggage. And not just, I'm not talking about psychological baggage. I'm not talking about the things we talk about in self-help groups. I'm talking about baggage in the way that we understand or relate to God. Is there baggage in our life that keeps us from experiencing God's grace? And is there baggage in our life that keeps us from deepening that relationship with God. And you know the biggest piece of baggage that keeps us from experiencing the depth of God's relationship? Might surprise you. It's complacency. I'm comfortable with where I am at. I'm comfortable with saying I'm a Christian and just living the way I'm living right now. I'm comfortable, I'm complacent. Complacency plagued the Israelites. Complacency plagues us today. That is the biggest baggage we carry as Christians. Rather than trying to deepen my relationship with God, I'm complacent with where I'm at. And so my prayer for each of us this new year is let our resolution this year be about God, not about us. We may need to lose weight. We may need to change a bad habit. We may need to get out of a destructive, toxic relationship. We may need to change jobs. We may need to do any one of a number of things, but that's about us. Let's make one about God this year and make that resolution to be that we are going to walk into that Jordan River. We are going to be baptized and we're gonna release whatever baggage is keeping us from revealing God's love this year and every year of our life. So what I'd like us to do as we close, I'd like us to just close our eyes and I want you to think about what baggage in your life just one thing in your life that keeps you from opening fully to God's love, because God's love is there for you right now. God's love is there for you burning in your heart. That's God's grace. That's the core of what we believe as Wesleyans, that God's grace is in your heart right now. Think about what that is. And then in your heart and in your mind, release it and let God's grace touch your heart in a new way. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I always like it when we do communion, the Lord's Supper, right after the sermon. Only because when we talk about releasing those things that, that keep us from experiencing God, we talk about that new baptism, we know. We talk about all of those things. The question is, how do we, how are we nurtured in that? And we're nurtured in that in many ways. We're nurtured by God's grace. But when we come to the Lord's Supper, it is a special means of grace. A special way when we experience God's grace. And God's grace simply is how God relates to all of human history. You know, there's a great line from the prophets where God speaks and God says, referring to the earth, God says, I didn't create a wasteland. I created a land to be inhabited. A land to be inhabited by the people I love. 
that message alone should want you to come to this table because it means that God's grace has called you <coughs> to be here and God's grace has called you to be an agent in the instrument of God's love. And so please join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, <coughs> Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you. <coughs> he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples as he gives it to each of you gathered here this morning saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And each time you do this, do so in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave the cup to each of his friends. As he gives it to each one of you today, even a disciple who would betray him. Saying, take, drink from this, each one of this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And each time you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. For out your Holy Spirit and us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now, as we prepare to enter into this sacred time of God's grace, let us join together and offer the perfect prayer that our Savior taught us. As the good people of Salem United Methodist Church say, Our, our Father... Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The table has been set, the invitation has been given, and all are welcome to come and receive.
This morning, will you join me in the closing prayer? Almighty God, we have heard in your word a wondrous truth. Your Son came to walk among us to reveal your love, to heal our brokenness, and to conquer even death. In praise and thanksgiving, we have rejoiced for you are our God, whose promises endure, and whose faithfulness to your people never fails nor wavers. Send us forth to carry the light of your Son to the world, so that all people may know the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love made incarnate in that manger in Bethlehem. In Jesus' name, amen. I would say I did, it's, it's a really wonderful idea, and Ed suggested that we all say the closing prayer together. I think it's much more meaningful when we do that, when we all participate together with the closing prayer. I thought I, I really think that was a great suggestion, Ed. So thank you. All right, please, and a very appropriate uh, hymn after the closing prayer, uh, Be Thou My Vision, on page 451, and there will be an introduction. <laughs> again I, I want to thank you for coming out today and thank you for our folks watching this broadcast at home uh, we are a very special community at Salem United Methodist Church and this year this year my commitment as your pastor is that we are going to thrive no matter what we have endured over the last two years and thank you, Elaine, for reminding us that 2022 will be better than 2021. Although you did remind us last year that 2021 would be better than 2020. But uh, this is your last chance to predict, okay? <laughs> but seriously, it doesn't matter, and this may sound ironic. Honestly, it does not matter what we may experience in the world. What matters is that we experience it with God. That makes the difference that makes the light in our life. And so thank you, Ed, for serving as a liturgist today. Wonderful job. Uh, for Don and Adam for the music. Appreciate that. Um, and thanks to all of you for being with us this morning. So now it is my blessing to call to mind in each of our hearts the many blessings of God and to know that as we are sent forth, those blessings are with us no matter what circumstance we encounter. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, touch and transform each of our hearts. May the love of God protect us no matter what we encounter during the coming week, the coming days, or the coming year. And for every decision we make, every breath we take, every word we speak, may we do so in full communion, God's holy, Spirit. Let us go in peace.
as a people, resolve this year to reveal God in what we say, in what we do, and most of all, in how we love. We conclude today as we do each time, good people of Salem gather with this powerful affirmation, we are a people loved by God. May we live as a sign to the world of God's love. And now you know, you notice, it's uh, only about, well, not even uh, maybe a quarter to, I think that clock's just a little fast. A quarter to, now for me to get paid, I have to stay for the full hour. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> just talk among yourselves. That's okay. We've got work for you after you get done up there. Yeah, right. I don't. I don't do that. Yet. <laughs> All right. We uh, we actually conclude today as we do each week. We have a beautiful song, and and this week we had three songs to choose from, and I literally could not pick because they were all. I think perfectly tied in. So I actually threw this totally to Don and Adam, and they uh, they picked this song, "Go Light Your World," which is a tremendous message song, and a very good way to reflect on, on what has happened here today. So, um, Hearts are blazing, so let's raise our candles.